Hello everyone, welcome back to the, uh, our Lent series, this is the third episode. If you haven't checked the other two episodes, you can find the first one here about Lent and what it means, and the second one all the way over here about why we want to be like Jesus and why he was so special. Now today, me and James, we're going to be talking about the miracles that were performed. So James, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, so the first thing really to look at, I guess, is why bother doing miracles anyway? Why did Jesus use that time that he had on earth um, to perform miracles? And I think one of the key things about that was it demonstrated something that nobody else had, and that was a power that can only come from God. It demonstrated to people that were around him that saw these amazing, unexplainable things happen, that Jesus was different. There was something all powerful about him uh, and they could not question the fact that he was in fact God in human form. So that's one of the reasons why he did miracles, but I think there's lots of other things as well. So there's something special about the miracles that Jesus performed and who he, and who he did them to. Um, for, exa for example, uh, he cared for our needs. Um, one example would be our physical needs, like when he fed the 5,000 with the fish and the bread. Are there, are there any more? Yeah, there are loads of examples where Jesus took care of people's physical needs, their hunger, their thirst, and things like that. Um, he made wine for a wedding. Uh, he, there are several occasions where he fed thousands of people with very small amounts of food uh, and things like that. So, uh, yeah, there's plenty of evidence for that. Another area where Jesus was particularly interested in helping people was with health needs. He was very famous for healing people to the extent that some people would travel for miles and miles and miles and miles to come and be in Jesus' presence so that he could heal them of their physical ailments. There was one example where uh, a guy who was paralyzed couldn't make his own way there, so his friends carried him all the way there. They even dug through the roof of the building that he, Jesus was in so they could lower him down because uh, Jesus had so many people around him, they couldn't get near him. So they went on top of the building and they, they lowered him in through the roof and Jesus healed him of his physical problems. And there were lots of others. There were lepers, um, people, there was people with leprosy. Um, there were unclean people uh, that were socially considered to be unclean because of their physical ailments. Uh, and Jesus dealt with all of them and healed lots and lots of different people of lots and lots of different things. So Jesus also cared about people's emo emotional needs. There's loads of examples in the Bible, like the widow's son and the Roman centurion slave. But the point of it is that they came to Jesus for the emotional support and Jesus took pity on them. And the final thing is Jesus dealt with people's spiritual needs. I mentioned that paralyzed man earlier. Um, and the way Jesus healed him was to forgive him of his sins. Um, he sort of did that to make a point, really. Um, that our spiritual needs are just as important, if not more important, than our physical and our emotional needs. Uh, and Jesus did that. He forgave people's sins on several occasions, uh, which got him into trouble with the religious leaders of the time because they didn't think he should be able to do that. Uh, but he did anyway, uh, because people need that kind of support too. So we've looked at how Jesus' miracles address our physical needs, emotional needs, spiritual needs, and things like that. But Jesus' miracles were also really inclusive. I mentioned before that he dealt with lepers and they were a group of people that at the time nobody would have gone anywhere near them. The unclean people that were socially unclean, again people would have just, they'd have been outcasts and no one would have wanted to deal with them but Jesus dealt with them. The fact that he healed the slave of a Roman soldier that Kean mentioned before was incredible. The Romans were the, the oppressive invading forces. They were military occupation of the time. They were not your friends, yet Jesus did miracles for them too. It didn't seem to matter who you were, whether you were a Jew like Jesus was, or a Gentile, which is everyone else who's not Jews. Uh, it didn't really matter. Jesus was happy to do a miracle where it was required for whoever required it. He really was inclusive in the truest sense. So with all the madness of people constantly flooding up to Jesus, trying to grab his attention. When Jesus was performing a miracle, he would always perform with the one person, which brings in the importance of the one, meaning that that miracle, that moment was between that person and Jesus. Now, don't get me wrong, he did perform miracles with large groups of people as well, like we said earlier, the 5,000. 
but typically the importance of the one was really between that one person and Jesus, really honing in that sense of closeness and real meaning towards that person. So all of this really demonstrates Jesus' compassion. The fact that he really cared for our needs and that he was really there to help us, not just personally, but overall as well. So all of these things show Jesus' humanity to us. That was his human side, how much he cares. But as I said right at the beginning, they also demonstrate that he was God. And really, really interestingly, I think this gives us a bit of a glimpse as to what the kingdom of God or heaven would look like on earth. We read in the Bible about heaven having no pain, no suffering, it being a perfect existence in the presence of God. And I think when we look at the miracles that Jesus did while he was alive, it starts to show us a little glimpse of that and what it might be like. So out of all the miracles that the Bible mentions, it talks about the greatest miracle that was ever performed, Jesus' death and resurrection. And it's easily the greatest miracle because not only was it a miracle back then, but it's also the greatest miracle to this day, not only for its importance, but also because of the meaning and that it means that we can have a closeness and a better relationship with God. But we will get into that in a later video. So to finish, I think we better ask the question, James, do miracles still happen today? It's an interesting question, isn't it? And I think the short answer is yes. Miracles still do happen today. Uh, I think it all depends on our perspective though. There are a lot of things that happen these days that we can't explain, um, but we tend to try and explain them away with science. Now I'm not against science. I know there's a big argument about religion versus science, and I don't think that's really an argument. I think science explains a lot of things about how stuff happens, but religion explains a lot about why it happens. And if we look at so many things that happen around us today, little things, big things. Uh, we, uh, as a team here, we know people who have been healed from really quite horrendous things and the medics couldn't explain why. And I'm married to a doctor, so I'm not against medical science. I, I love it, it saved my life on many occasions, um, quite literally, but there's still limits to it that we don't understand. And we can try and explain those things away or we can say, well, that was a miracle and, and we don't know why that happened. Uh, and we can attribute it to God. And I think there are lots of things that happen that even when we do understand how it happens, there's still miracles. We understand childbirth, but if we actually look at how that happens, that's miraculous. I've got two kids, I've seen it happen twice. It's amazing. Um, so I think miracles happening today uh, do happen. Uh, we've just stopped seeing them as much as we used to, effectively. Um, so yeah, so here's a question for you to finish. Have you ever experienced something that you can't explain? Something that you think might just be a coincidence or uh, a happy accident, but really, if you were to look at it from a spiritual perspective, uh, and if you believe that God was real, that might be a sign that he was acting in your life and that he was still working today, doing miraculous things. We hope you're enjoying these videos and we hope you're learning something. Do check us out for the next one. As Kean mentioned, we're going to be talking about lots more stuff to do with Lent and Jesus and looking at things in more detail. So hit the subscribe button, do the YouTube things of uh, signing and subscribing and clicking the bell icon and you'll get notified when our next video comes out and we hope to see you then. Thanks ever so much. Bye bye.